Welcome viewers, today on TV Box Top, I have the best TV box for the year and it's priced below $60. Some of you may have seen this brand featured at least twice on this channel. Some of you may have never heard of them, but trust me when I tell you this brand TOX which stands for Trust on X is one of the top brands that deliver boxes with features designed to appeal to any TV box enthusiast. This is their latest release called the TOX3 running on the Amlogic S905X4 chipset with unique features never seen in top brands such as Yugo's A95X and B-Link. They don't release boxes very often but when they do, it's usually a great model. So with that said, I know I've already raised your expectation and I make no apologies for doing so. So I ask that you prepare yourself for something you have never seen before and you'll determine if I'm overreacting or if the TOX3 is something you have been waiting for. So don't go anywhere, you have that right after this. So I'm back and let's get started. The TOX3 comes in two versions, a 4GB, 32GB model and a TOX3 Lite version which is their 2GB, 16GB model. Both models have the same features. So first I have the usual stuff. In the box, you get the box itself, one infrared remote, one HDMI cable, a 5V power adapter, an external antenna, and a user manual. So the design of their box has not changed with an all plastic design well ventilated to the top with the TOX branding. It has one HDMI port, an Ethernet LAN port and its DC input jack to its ray with one USB 3.0, one USB 2.0 and a micro SD card reader to the side. To the other side has an external antenna. Below the box has lots of ventilation holes and to the front has an LED display, but not just any display, and I'll return to that in a moment. When you start up for the first time and each time thereafter, you have this TOX animation for a few seconds, then you're presented with the option to choose between two launchers. The Quick Step Launcher, which is like your ADW Launcher 2 with the drag and drop features, more suited to navigating with a mouse pointer. And you have the TOX launcher, which has a basic layout more suited to a direction pad. So for this video, I'll be using the quick step launcher. And if you don't want this popping up each time you start the box or press the home button, you simply select always to boot directly into your preferred choice. With this launcher, you get advanced features such as long click menu pop-ups, drag and drop shortcuts, and drag and drop to uninstall apps. It comes with a navigation bar and status bar with full system controls and notifications. And you have the option to change the wallpaper to a custom image or an installed live wallpaper. So as mentioned, this firmware comes with features never seen in other top models and some of these will surprise you. Starting with 4K display up to 2160p at 60Hz and this is true 60Hz 12-bit as detected by my capture card. It has HDR display with an adaptive HDR feature. This comes in handy and makes it compatible with HDR and non-HDR TVs. There is a unique feature called Lock UI Size. What this does is set the viewpoint of the launcher to the actual size of your selected resolution. So this is how it looks in 4K as that's the resolution I selected. This feature comes in very useful with YouTube that always has a viewpoint of 1080p on TV boxes even though you select 4K. So this sets the viewpoint to 4K as I'll demonstrate in just a moment. You have 10-bit and 12-bit color display modes. It has built-in screen rotation to portrait mode, reverse portrait and reverse landscape. This feature comes in handy with vertical monitors for advertising and projectors when mounted to a ceiling. You have advanced auto frame rate switching options. 
advanced surround sound audio options. It has a root switch by way of the Magix application. Advanced mouse pointer options. This is one of those features you don't usually see. A feature to control the navigation bar and status bar. This is to switch them on or off. What's missing is an auto hide feature. A button mapper feature. To date, I have never used this feature because it does not function like my favorite gamepad key mapping app that I use to emulate touchscreen functions during gaming. It comes in 54 various languages. It has client server and Samba server feature. It has a built-in hardware monitor for the status bar. You can now access the speed of the launcher's animation without entering the developer options. This can make the interface respond very quickly if you're that type of user. And I saved the best features for last. Under power, you have a couple of features never seen before. The first is a feature to control the power LED indicator. With this feature, you can set the LED to flash in response to CPU activity or keystrokes, or you can simply turn it off or always on. The next feature, and this is the one I like the most, is the ability to display hardware monitor options on the front LED display. With this feature, you can create a loop consisting of CPU temperature, CPU frequency, your current resolution, and you can also adjust the speed of the loop. You can also choose to display each of these monitors individually. This can come in extremely handy when monitoring for overheating. Another feature I like is the ability to change the CPU scaling governor from scheduled or on demand to performance mode with this switch. What this does is sets all cores of the CPU to their maximum performance. To achieve this on other models, you needed an app called Kernel Auditor that only works if the box was rooted. Now you have it with the flick of a switch. And you have power key definition options among other options. So this right here is what you call effort on the part of the developer of this firmware. So now that we have seen all these amazing unique features, I'll now move on to what you can actually do on this box. So in the apps section, these are what come pre-installed with the exception of the live wallpaper that I installed. So I'll install some additional apps needed for this review. So I'm back and let's first start with its system and hardware information. So this model runs on 4GB of DDR4 RAM and 32GB of internal storage. The manufacturer as we already know is TOX and its Bluetooth version is 4.2. Its Amlogic S905X4 CPU is a quad-core Cortex-A55 model with a CPU clock speed of 2.0 GHz configured in 32-bit mode. This means it can only run 32-bit apps and games. And as mentioned under the power settings, its scaling governor is currently set to Schedule, which limits its frequency to some degree. And if I want maximum performance, I simply head over to the settings area under power and enable the max performance mode switch. Here it now shows the governor is set to performance. Its display and graphics are powered by the Mali G31 GPU with OpenGL version 3.2, which is great for gaming. For Wi-Fi, it has dual band 2.4 plus 5 gigahertz wireless connectivity. Its operating system is Android 11 and it shows that the box is currently not rooted, but it does have a root switch and I'll show you how to use it in a moment. If you look under devices, it shows that its GPU has Vulkan version 1.1 support, which is another great feature for gaming. Its idle operating temperature is around 52 degrees Celsius and with its CPU clocked at 2.0 GHz, it can get as high as 70 degrees during gaming, so some additional cooling may be required to prevent overheating. For playing videos, it comes with all of the decoders for the playback of HD and 4K HDR Dolby Vision videos and it also supports the HLG HDR format, which is a higher HDR standard. For audio, it comes with all the surround sound audio decoders such as DTS HD, EAC3 for Dolby Atmos and the new AV1 decoder. And that's its system and hardware information. Returning now to its root access feature, out of the box, the TOX tree comes not rooted and while this may be great for some apps, there are others that are unique to TV boxes that require root access. 
So to gain access, simply head over to the settings area under the Super User option, enable the magic switch, and restart the box. Once restarted, you will now find a Magix application in the app section. Open it to install Magix and it will reboot one more time. Once it reboots, you will now have root access. For DRM, it shows that it has Google Widevine Level 3 with no HDCP protection. This means the box is not fully Google certified and it does not have the digital rights to play paid subscriptions such as Netflix, Disney Plus and Amazon Prime Video in HD or 4K. You will get basic 480p resolution only even if you are paying for a premium account. Returning now to the feature that unlocks the viewpoint of the launcher. When watching YouTube videos, if you open the stats for nerds information and play a 4K video, you will see that the viewpoint shows that even though the movie is playing in 4K, you are actually viewing it within a 1080p frame. If you head over to the settings area under resolution and unlock the UI size and return to YouTube, you would now see that you are actually viewing the video within a 4K frame. On this box, YouTube also triggers the HDR feature on my TV. For screen mirroring and casting your mobile devices, it comes with the official version of Miracast, but unfortunately, when I attempted to cast my mobile phone, the official Miracast feature does not connect. So I had to resort to the AirScreen app that can only mirror your mobile device in 480p resolution on this box. So for customization features, we already saw that you can use alternative launchers. You can change the wallpaper to a custom wallpaper or a live wallpaper and you have 360 degrees screen rotation to portrait mode, reverse portrait and reverse landscape. So I don't need to go over that again. So I'll move on to its 4K HDR video playback capabilities and I'll play my usual list of videos to test for HDR and HLG HDR video playback. I'll also play one Adobe Vision video and one AV1 video. Only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico, but the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case of a tie on points. The mosaic of the... So as expected with this chipset, you get 4K HDR and 4K HLG HDR together with Dolby Vision and AV1 videos playing smoothly on this box. So for surround sound audio, I have some great news that's not unique to this box but is good information for users who connect their boxes to their surround sound audio receivers. I was contacted by a Sony technician who explained how to achieve all of the surround sound audio formats on my receiver from the video files I've been using for the past couple of years. He explained 
that these videos don't have one format but at least two formats within one video and the way you access them is by switching between speaker configuration. For example, in one of my Dolby Atmos videos contains Dolby Atmos and a Dolby Digital Plus where multi-speaker configuration accesses Dolby Atmos and front surround sound speaker configuration accesses Dolby Digital Plus. When I applied this method, I also discovered that I can actually get Dolby True HD to display correctly on this receiver. So I'll now demonstrate applying this new configuration and I'll indicate the various formats being used. This is Dolby Atmos. So this first video contains Dolby Atmos under multi-speaker configuration and when I switch to front surround speaker configuration, it switches to Dolby Digital Plus. Around you with 10 point accuracy. Prepare to experience something spectacular. This one is encoded with Dolby Atmos, and when I switch to front surround configuration, it switches to Dolby True HD. And immerses you in every moment. This video is encoded with DTS HD Master Audio. Well, you all know this one. This one is encoded with Dolby Surround and a Dolby True HD. This is the left channel. Next, we have the center channel. This one is encoded using DTSX Master Audio. This one with Dolby Surround and a Dolby Digital. Please note, the Amlogic S905X4 chipset is known to be problematic with various media players. After hours of testing, the only media player that can deliver these formats like you see in this demonstration is the Kodi media player, with its settings set to expert, audio channels set to 7.1, and with audio pass-through enabled, along with all Dolby and DTS audio options enabled. All other media players failed in one area or the other. So for my final demonstration, I'll be testing its Android gaming features. First, here I connected my gamepad via Bluetooth and the connection is stable and responsive. Next, I have root access, which allows me to install my favorite key mapping apps, which allows me to assign gamepad buttons or keyboard and mouse buttons to touchscreen functions. This comes in handy, especially for battle royal games. And thirdly, I'll be monitoring for overheating with this heat monitor overlay. This is PUBG on medium graphic settings using a keyboard and mouse with the Panda key mapping app. I used a cooling fan as temperatures rose into the 70s. This game is called Crossout and I'm also using a keyboard and mouse with key mapping. This is Fortnite using the NVIDIA GeForce Now application on the Epic's game platform. 
The game and graphics rendering runs in the cloud, so the graphics quality is much higher. And here is some more gameplay, Destiny 2 on the Steam platform via the NVIDIA GeForce Now application. When using the GeForce Now application, gamepad key mapping is not required as keyboard and mouse and gamepads are compatible. I removed the cooling fan during Fortnite and as you saw the temperature rose into the 70s. So to conclude, let's take a look at some benchmarks and where it places on my rankings chart. First, the speed of its RAM and internal storage. It has a RAM copy speed of 3420 megabytes per second. 104 megabytes per second read speed and 72 megabytes per second write speed for its internal storage. Next, it's Wi-Fi and Ethernet LAN speeds. Both the 5 GHz band and the LAN port based on my network speed of 154 megabits per second achieved a maximum speed of my bandwidth. The 2.4 GHz band achieved 90%, which is unusually high for the 2.4 GHz band, and this speaks volumes for the quality of the network adapter. In its Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark, it scored 141 single core and 438 multi core. In the 3 dmark graphics benchmark, it qualified for the Wild Life Test scoring 187 with Vulcan support and the Slingshot Extreme Test scoring 373. And in the Antutu benchmark, it scored 102,408. So let's now see where it places on the rankings chart. So I've updated the scores on my rankings chart and the new TOX3 is at position 24 based on its Antutu benchmark score and it received a 4 out of 5 star rating for its never seen before unique firmware features and its performance. You can view this chart on my blog where you can compare all its benchmarks and features in comparison to other boxes. I also provide coupon links and price comparison using these links right here and you can also access its video directly right here. See the link to this chart in the description directly below this video. In summary, I'll end the way I started. The new TOX3 is the best TV box for the year. It has never seen before from your features with great performance and priced below $60. I don't think there's any TV box within this price range that can match what this box delivers. And in my opinion, the only thing stopping this box from being the best overall is the fact that it's running on a quad-core 32-bit CPU. However, it does have a few cons and these include no DRM to view paid subscriptions in HD and 4K and despite its well-ventilated design, its temperature can still rise into the 70s during gaming and for this I recommend you use a cooling fan. So that brings to an end of this review. Currently, you can get it for only $48 with a $10 coupon off the actual price of $58. You can also get the 2GB, 16GB TOX3 Lite version with same features for a lower price of $43 with the same $10 coupon off the actual price of $53. These deals are only available from trusted TOX dealers on AliExpress and I can't say for sure if it would be available on Amazon. This is a limited time offer as stocks are limited. Also, these deals are only available using the links I provided in the description below this video, so be sure to use them to be taken directly to the coupon offers. And in closing, I ask that you give this video the thumbs up to show your support. If this is the first time viewing one of my videos and would like to be notified each time I release a new TV box video, then be sure to click that subscribe button and ring the notifications bell next to it to receive notifications each time I release a new video or decide to do a giveaway. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, stay tuned and see you in the next one.